First thing we're going to do is identify your grounding components. First, we have our power meter. After that, we have our grounding cable. And then next, we have our grounding rod. Now, for the do-it-yourselfers, the grounding rod needs to be 8 feet in the ground. The grounding cable needs to be between number 6 and number 8 gauge ground wire. Starting up top, we're going to run our coaxial cord down from our satellite dish or TV antenna into a ground block. Now, a ground block is not a splitter. It is simply a pass-through. So the port you go into is the same port you have to come out of. You cannot mix and match with a ground block. Also, don't forget to do what we call a drip loop. It's pretty much where you give yourself a little bit of excess wire before you go into the ground block. It's just uh, you, you looping the wire around before you go into the ground block or splitter. And also, don't go straight into the splitter. You want to come from the bottom up into the splitter. That way, if it was to ever rain, the rain doesn't flow into your splitter or your ground block. It, it, it flows down with the wiring. Next, we're going to install what we call the messenger wire. Now, this is a thinner wire than your standard ground cable. Uh, it's between 10 and 18 AWG. That's the American wire gauge standard. And it, it helps with static electricity that is created in the atmosphere. Um, helps prevent any outside interference. It's just a slight protection against the, the small electrons that are in the air. And you want to connect this to your antenna mass. Now you can use the cold water clamp or some satellite dish mass have a hole specifically designed for lug nuts is what we call them. Um, that way you can connect your messenger wire um, securely. Lastly, folks, we need to run a ground wire from our ground block to our grounding cable. Now this ground wire is usually between 10 and 18 AWG. Now there are a few ways you can mount this. You can use what we call the split bolt, a corner clamp for your meter box. But the best way to do this is to use what we call the inter-system bonding connector. Now what it is, it's a connector, a grounding connector with multiple ports. So if ever in the future you decide to install any extra antennas you're going to have the extra ports readily available without having to add another grounding lug or split bow or anything like that for those of you whose setup isn't as simple as this you do have other options for example you can ground to your water hose pipe if your gas and your water is bonded together you can throw on a cold water clamp and use that as a ground. Um, you have the I-beam clamp, which will pretty much clamp on anything. Well, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. If you found this video to be helpful, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys next time.